All right. <clears throat> you see this picture? You're just trying to dismiss it. Primitive. <clears throat> well, I'm telling you, I'm here to open your eyes on a number of topics, starting with this one right here, and I want you to put your mind on Leonardo da Vinci and his model of man. And where do you think he got the idea? Oh, he had two other feet sticking out to this position. That's different. Yeah, that's really a big difference. A man inside a circle. You don't need to have the two sets of arms to make the same point for the same angles. I am upset because uh, just like many of you, I have been lied to for so long and poisoned. It wasn't, uh, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I still believed that I should feel safe drinking fluoride and eating GMOs and that it wasn't having any effect on me. I am about to present you overwhelming proof, incontrovertible, that there were giants in the Bible, giants the size that Rob Skiba talks about, and then some. And I have the fossils to prove it. And using Victor Schauberger's vortex, I can find them almost anywhere. And you can use that formula and find them too. You want gemstones? I'll show you how to find them. Do you want to know what a matrix is? You can find out. Google diamonds raw on matrix. And then Google garnet raw on matrix. And then you could try twirling, turquoise. Find out, you know, how come some are graded as a sapphire and some are not. Big difference in money if money had any real value. I have a couple of choices that you're going to have to make that I've had to make about myself. And I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm the guy that's exposing David Icke and all of these other guys, so look me up. My name is Alan Hughes, Flat Earth Nation. You guys looked up David Icke? Look me up. Where did I get this information? There are no aliens coming. The Bible is true. Rome, the Antichrist, is the enemy. There's very few people we can trust. The road is not wide. It is narrow. I'm going to go over some fossils now with you. And I want you to use that same open mind that if you can see that I am that person on the rock wall wearing his poncho with his arms out saying, hey, this is the measure of man. And it's, if you don't, if you don't see the comparisons to the Leonardo da Vinci and realize that that guy wasn't copying Leonardo, so let's look at some, because I'm going to, you know, I want to put this one out, but I've been, I've been working on this for three weeks. I want to get this out and I'm going to bed. I want to wake up and then I'm going to, I'm going to keep going on this because I've got so much information. I'm going to play you a video where a geologist wouldn't even look at these, wouldn't even look at them because, and it wasn't because of me or anything else. It was because of where I found them. He knows, no, no, there's no fossils there. They know where the fossils are, sure. Sure they do. 
And I am in Palisade, Colorado, by the Colorado River. Because using Victor Schauberger's ideas based on my interpretation of the Bible and that there was a great flood. And Victor's contribution to science, in my mind, the uh, should be the Nikola Tesla that we talk about because he's a real person and I'm not sure Nikola Tesla was. But Victor was the genius and he was a common man who only had his genius recognized by winning a contest of how to get the most efficient log flume, the most logs down the mountain in the least amount of time. And it was an open contest by a prince in Bavaria somewhere. And it was it's one of those things where you can't fake it. He won by, he destroyed him. He was five times faster. But using his methods, if there was a flood and people were washed away in it that had been trying to reach higher ground or lived there, where would they go to? Where? How would they flow down the mountain and where would they settle? It's that simple. And it's the same principle that they reverse engineered on trying to figure out where gold goes and how it flows down a river which is actually a, a gold vein which is my thesis is that gold and the elements are being dug knowingly by people in the Illuminati and in the know because they are still working alchemy they need those elements especially the rare elements which uh, I can prove that they worked all the way through it because I can show them all the, you know, the black diamonds uh, that they, the burl, whatever they want to call it. What was the mad rush here to Colorado, supposedly in the 1870s and 80s, they said silver, molly beldum, uh, uranium, things like that. I got it in bucket loads. And it's everywhere. So they obviously didn't want that. But what they didn't want me to find is what's going to be the most overwhelming, easy proof for you. And that is, is it possible that metaphorically and visually God would give us a sign that our hearts can be changed from stone and however they translate that word from the original language we'll have to find out into a heart of flesh and if you have a heart of flesh it's you're blessed you're it's good that's a good sign because someday we're going to be judged by going through a fire and all that's going to remain of us and our matrix are precious stones gold silver opal Things like that. And I'm going to show you. They're everywhere. That has happened. And uh, <clears throat> unlike the John the Baptist paving the way for Jesus, you know, I'm not, you know, Jesus is, has already been here. I'm not Jesus, I'm, but I'm. I am telling you that I am of the spirit of Elijah or John the Baptist in saying that Jesus warned and said he was coming in judgment. And I'm not saying that it was the time of the giants. I'm saying it was the time of whatever was this last great mud flood thing that the Jesuits and everything pulled off when they Somehow all of our history is faked, especially faked in Russia, especially faked in Europe. That's all fake history. You guys know it. You got statues of El Cid in Spain that look like a Viking. Give me a break. So 
all of the minerals, all the veins, like uh, a ganglion cyst. Wherever there's a end or in a bulb in a vein of gold or something like that, when they find it, that that's where there is the nugget. The uh, you know, it's it's the one sitting on the top. It's not the dust that they you know scrape it all out for, which I think is easier than because. But now, even now, if they didn't know, they can use my method that once you find a gold mine in a gold mined area, map it out as a giant, and you'll you'll find that's where it is. And what and what I'm going to show you, and what I found is there's common breaks in the skull and the fossils of these giants and humans, and so they lead to a lot of the same places, and and. Of course, when you guys search me out, you know, I've only been doing the, the stone, megalith, uh, forensicing the stones for about six, seven months. But I've, but the here, here's what I'm going to debunk. The giant rock walls in New England that are just running everywhere and then they seem to meet and gather. And well, that those are, you know, the veins and arteries and the, the way what we call the or what the miners looking for gold used to call the round stones, you know, which are the knuckles and things like that, that end up laying stacked and stay like that. Well, they stay like that. So there goes your New England walls myth, the Tennessee walls. Where did all these walls come from? Somebody did a measurement of the miles, and there was like quarter million miles just in New Jersey of those walls enough to go around the world or around the planet so that's gone the uh, the caves in uh, the gondolas uh, or the or the grotto caves in China where and then in, in Turkey where they would have the big Buddhas built inside them and that one guy mud flood University is right of course uh, they you know what he is saying is that they they weren't uh, they didn't carve those out and those aren't carved things what they are is that's the tissue of the muscle. Uh, for example, does that look familiar? Like the inside of the walls of those grottos? See the mysterious carvings that the great aliens did. Oh, I don't know if you can see that in there, but that's a black diamond and then a red garnet. I'm going to call it garnet. I'm not going to call it a sapphire. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, they used to go crazy for this stuff in Colorado. Absolutely nuts, man. It was very important. But now you can take it to him, you know, and they'll say, no, that's nothing. Not a fossil. So, well, let's look at a few. Okay. What is that? Does that look like a part of a human? I showed you this one on the sneak preview the other day, which I believe has An exposed organ, and uh, can you see where I hit it with a file? No, you can't, can you? I don't know if you can see that. I can put these two together, and it would be a nerve ending. This, of course, is a just like this, it's a rock, and this in my hand. I haven't, you know, I haven't got any acid or anything. I just found this because, you know, when you're told that you're wrong about something, you want to go find more proof. And uh, so I went and found a miniature version, maybe a baby of the giants. And 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 what you're looking at here is the major break. That I'm going to be able to point out on most of them is is the uh, by the ear. 
But yeah, th this was was just a ugly rock covered in dirt, and it took me about three hours to get all the clay and everything else off of it. Was not easy. Not expecting. Uh, I, I know. I know the drill. But you want to tell me that rocks just look like bones? Oh, sure they do. Bones look like bones too. Some rocks look like hearts. And once you start knowing what to look for, you'll see that all rocks have the same patterns. And, and can you just see a little Mayan clutching this, having been etched into it around it like it's a moon, and then traveling up to another one, you know, or speaking into it, and, and then having that falsely interpreted as if, uh, you know, he's a flying machine. All, you know, it doesn't matter. You can Once you can start looking at the rocks, it's not hard to see. Well, there are shapes where you can see where would, on, on this little one here, where's the left ventricle? Where's the right atrium? And if I would knock that off and knock this off, what would be this? Well, when you can start detecting that pattern on all rocks and realize that the more you look at it, some rocks look like meat. They look like they've been turned to flesh. And they still all have the same telltale signs. Which, you know, could look like fat or cartilage or veins. So, I'm going to tip this over. See if we can look at the bottom. Okay. Does that look like it fossilized anything? Just a just erosion. That's just erosion. Because if that's just erosion, am I going to be able to pick it apart? And I'll tell you exactly what's underneath it. Does that make me? A satanic mind reader? No, absolutely not. It makes this a fossil, and I know it's underneath it. And just because Ron over at the Fruta Museum didn't want to believe that, or even look at it, like this could be a Coachella, and that this could just be an organ, and that when I pull this whole thing out, I am going to have one huge gemstone. Oh, so for him, I, you know, how about I go find another little Coachella? And because I'm in, in, in my uh, world, it's a common breaking point. I'm going to find them from humans and animals. Uh, this is an inner eardrum. So what I'm what I'm saying is, I didn't want to take this one apart because this one here was the original. I don't know if I'm going to call it the the Skiba or or not because there's a few people like Ron Skiba who stuck with it and stuck to his guns. Zin Garcia, Jonathan McKennis, uh those are people I like. And. Uh, there's a couple more. I just can't think of them right now. But what I can do, what they what they didn't know is that I can go find another big skull because I know how to find them, and I can start taking them apart and finding what what they would call a matrix when you start googling it for these, and it it doesn't take long. Because it's not that hard, which is why I want to revoke all of their other PhDs. And as for now, I am the Albert Einstein of the paleontology world. I can dissect and I can chip away. 
and I can identify where these holes are, what it's from. Oh, it only took me three days to learn how to do it. I know where these came from. Some of you guys do too, just by looking at it. You know it. You just wished I didn't clean them so good. You want to tell me, whoa, that's a, uh, what they call it? Railroad slag. That's railroad slag. Okay. Do you, yeah, you know, you could stop and go, well, do you know what a, the three layers of the meninges of the brain are? I didn't either. I just know patterns. I know what works. So you find those common breaks. Auditory. Why am I standing up? Ugh. Yeah, you guys are in trouble because I can I can break that all the way down and once I get into forensic in the stones I can I can clean out this uh, auditory canal really easily and and I'll be able to break it down in such a way where I'll show you where you know like uh, you can see the arteries and the bones and I'll be able to take those apart and show you that those are where the minerals are and either I'm a stone whisperer <laughs> I patent that word <laughs> or, or I know you know I know that of what's going to be underneath it because I know I've just studied and I know where those those lead to and I know where that bone comes from and I know where you know I can hit it and polish it and say that's going to be a crystal This is a matrix. You are in a matrix. Have you Googled it? That's what the matrix is. When you Google it, they'll say raw on matrix. And in their mad rush to extract the elements in the minerals they use cyanide and other dangerous things they are slowly poisoning the earth to get at these elements to the point of they're even having to reconfigure some of the lead that's what I read So I don't just have the black diamond one. I wanted to show you I can find them anywhere. They're all the same. They all look like meat. Once you find out where the brakes are, it's very easy to predict where you can go and find them and where they'll be just by finding a, a spot like this and then you can go to that Gray's Anatomy book and then you just match them up it's not that hard see this one would be easy because there's these big uh, big things on it that make it You know, they've got those diagrams right down to it. But what you have to do is deal, you realize you're dealing, oh, there, there's one. That might even, I might even be on another, uh, that might not, might, might either be a Coachella. 
because that's a common break. Yeah, I could be on another Coachella right there. I could pop that out for you tomorrow, but then again, I'm not going to just get in the the prove it to me, prove it to me, prove it again syndrome to you guys. I'm proving it to you right now. <sighs> okay, that's that would be the it's the equivalent to the Coachella's hyperthalamus. Maybe it's a thalamus. Maybe the giant's only 200 feet tall instead of 500 feet tall. Who knows? But the simple fact is, all those giant hunters and things like that were right. And all of the alien hunters, you're wrong. And my name, Alan Hughes from Flat Earth Nation, have never monetized a damn thing. And But I'm not passing up the credit on this one, boys. No. I put this together. I'm the one who put it together. I figured it out. Gold vein means gold in the veins. It means blood. Blood and water. That's our secret. That's what the Lord told us. So keep out there and look for it's a common break. Once you find that break, it's easy to go and find where the crystals will be. I want you to go just go out and find your ornamental rock. Look for something like that and start looking for its you know where do the nerves cross over? How close are you to the Coachella? Can you get at it? Is it in there? It's going to look like a crystal to you. It is a crystal, but when you take it to the man, they're going to tell you, oh, that's not a sapphire, that's a garnet, and they're going to give you the lower price because money doesn't matter to them. Their friend has a mine down the road selling sapphires, and he's the only one. About an eighth of an inch underneath all that crust is where that crystal starts and this is a big one you can tell it runs all the way this was a pure heart so I mean I could just keep showing you these things so go out find them even uh, go go look what they call that railroad slag glass and uh, you'll find Do your own forensics. So what? It's a stone. Be careful. Wait until, you know, they either are going to have to, they're going to have to deal with me now. Right? Because once I get going on the other ones, and I start bringing in specimens of uh, gemstones, or you guys do, on a level that's unprecedented, because we can find them anywhere. Yeah, that's part of a nose. I, I have the other part somewhere that I can match it right up. It's just that I've got these things scattered everywhere. And I could take this one. And if I had some, uh, I'll just have to wait. I'd like to get some help with this. And start taking that one. And I'll be able to take it all the way down. Okay. Now, who's with who, you guys? Want to get in on this? Look, they have. They're going to call me a quack. But did you know that the major mineral gemstones, the most valuable ones in the world, what do they have in common? Unless they were found by a major company, they were dismissed and said, nope, that's not real, until somebody kept fighting for it and said, no, it's real, show me the difference. And then they said, oh, you're right, uh, it, it shouldn't be where you found it, but you found a rare one and it's worth this much money, and then they have to give in. Once you get so much evidence, now what do you think I could do with that once I start dissecting it, going around with a Gray's Anatomy and fine vice and chisel, I'll be able to chisel these off, 
predicting what's going to be crystal. Oops. <laughs> like right here. And I'll tell you what, you have to be careful because when you clean them off, you can see there's crystals in there. I, I can see a bunch of small ones and then that one big one that is right in the center. But they don't mean anything to me because I, can, I know how to get the big ones out. It's just going to take me a little more practice. But... If I start doing it, which I don't, really don't want to, because it takes so much time, but if you guys start doing it, flood them. Look at that. You know, and it's not, this is not a risk. This is up by the brain, but I'll be able to track, because the Gray's Anatomy, I wouldn't be this confident unless I went through those Gray's Anatomy books and, and looked at them and matched them up point for point. I... I'm the only PhD in paleontology and medical world today. Everybody else has to get on board with this and realize that we're living in fossil world. When you go climbing, you're like one of those robots in Terminator, just stepping on the skulls. Where's the left? Where's the right? Where's the bone? Where would the crystal start? This one is a this one is really a good one. A couple more. This was so dirty, you would not have recognized it as a bone, as a gemstone, or a fossil. If somebody took the time to clean it off even a little, they might call it petrified wood. I know. I cleaned that off with my grinder. A rock? No. The fossil. Once you start looking at a pattern, there's just different fractal sizes of that human or animal, whatever it would be. Left, right, main vein. Find the auditory channel. There's three holes. And I bet, you know, like in the mud flood in those grotto caves, the, uh, the, the mud flood founder, hats off to that guy, he was saying that, they, see, they used those two holes, they drilled them to hold up that thing. The cave was natural, mud flood professor. The holes were natural. They just utilized those holes to put in the statue after they had maybe the cave just naturally appeared you know or they excavated that point of it that's how come you uh spelunkers are always wondering it seemed like you know a natural thing and then all of a sudden it just kept winding down winding down into nothing let's see if you can find a gemstone there would be a nice, easy pattern to find. There's one right there. Hold on there. Let me put this 
right here. One second. Looking for my file. I'm not going to keep looking, but I could hit that with a file. It's a gemstone. This used to be a big deal around here. They came looking to the Colorado. This is what they were looking for. Now they don't care. Now it's nothing. No way I'm wrong on this. Get out your books and start looking that stuff up. The myths that have been destroyed here tonight are worth being destroyed. The things being confirmed here tonight are the only things in life worth being confirmed. That Jesus Christ is our Lord. He's offering us salvation. You're not an unbeliever. You're just not persuaded. Give me more time. I just have to, I got to go to bed. This would be enough to get started on.